Hi guys, and welcome to another Gas City Gaming Warhammer 40k 8th Edition preview video. In this video, we'll be taking a look at a few new previews from Games Workshop about uh, Marines that we have, uh, some info about Centurions, more info about Gilliman, Predators, and Dreadnoughts, and a whole mess of new spoilers slash leaks about Chaos, so mm, let's get to it. First things first, though, the, the boring stuff, the regular Marines. Psh, come on. Um, so, first things first, we have our Cent... I'll talk about this guy here. Uh, grav cannons have been toned down. Uh, like I said, they want people to have a lot of viable options. Before, grav cannons were that either you take them or you don't, and you do worse because you didn't take them kind of thing. Uh, but now we have grav cannon with a grav amp, the stat for it. Uh, they have a 24-inch range, heavy 4, so if the model with it moves, it'll have a minus 1 to hit, unless it has a special rule saying it doesn't. Uh, but it has 4 shots. Uh, strength 5, minus 3 uh, armor modifier, and does 1 damage a piece. If the target has a save characteristic of 3 plus or better, this weapon has a damage characteristic of D3. So, same thing as, well, similar thing to before. Uh, it will do worse against more weakly armored units. It won't do, it'll just do its regular 1 damage. Um, but against more heavily armored units, like Terminators, for example, um, or Primaris Marines, or vehicles even, it'll do D3 damage per unsaved uh, wound. But no matter what, uh, it'll only be its minus 3 armor modifier, it'll never be a minus 4 to negate those two ups completely, and new things will still have your invulnerable saves and stuff like you did before against Graf Cannons. But yeah, I can see definitely, definitely toned down and I can appreciate that. So, onto our Centurion info, no picks for these unfortunately, but we got some exciting stuff coming up. Anyway, I'll try not to spoil myself. Uh, Centurion Missile Launcher uh, does D3 shots at strength 8, has a negative 2 armor modifier, and do D3 damage apiece. And they can also take two LAS cannons, which we already have uh, our info about. So Centurions can be really heavy, uh, dedicated heavy anti-vehicle, just like before. Or they can also take two heavy bolters apiece and hurricane bolters. Or they can be really, really uh, anti-infantry, anti-horde armies. So depending what you want to do, you can make them one way or t'other. Or kind of a mix of both. They will also have their 2-up save back and 3 wounds apiece. So they'll kind of be that mix of a little tougher than a Terminator. they got to have their differences since Terminators have 2 wounds now. Centurions will have 3 wounds now and be able to carry a little more weapons. Also, uh, with their last cannons missile launchers being heavy, they'll still be able to move and fire them, just not quite as well. Uh, Predators can carry 4 last cannons now. Uh, they have toughness 7, uh, 11 wounds apiece. Or uh, they can also carry an auto cannon and heavy bolters. So again, you can make them a dedicated anti-heavy unit or anti-vehicle unit or kind of anti infantry slash horde with the auto cannons and the bolters. And the nice thing now, don't forget, uh, vehicles can fire all their weapons at different targets now. So if you have a few different hordes of advancing infantry or a couple weakened things towards the end of the game where you just want to strip off a few hull points off of a few different things, um, you can split fire all of your different weapons. So you have the two uh, sponson mounted, uh, sponson, correct me, I've been the word, the two side mounted hull can, uh, las cannons, they can fire at something each on the, in their arc, and the turret mounted las cannon can fire at something in its arc. And it's turret mounted, so it has a large arc. But you can split fire all of its weapons now, which is nice. Uh, Gilliman, as we know, uh, has six attacks and nine wounds, but we now know a little bit more about his weapons. Uh, his gun is rapid fire three, so six inches within a half range, which they didn't give us. But uh, it is strength six, AP negative one, and does two damage a piece. So it can really mow through some uh, even terminators. Essentially, make their save a little worse and knock off a couple terminators in opposing armies, maybe chaos armies. Uh, his sword is, of course, the Sword of the Emperor. Uh, it is plus two strength, AP modifier negative four, so negates three up saves totally, uh, and does D3 damage a piece. It also does an additional D3 mortal wounds, mortal wounds, on a wound roll of six. So that seems good. With his uh, six attacks hitting on twos and strength, what, what are the strength lots. Um, you're going to be wound, uh, seeing those mortal wounds probably more than once or twice in a game. Uh, D3 additional mortal wounds as well. So the, the picture, sorry, what they said is it does D3 additional mortal wounds. So I'm guessing it does its regular wound of, yeah, you rolled a six, that wounds, plus D3 mortal wounds. So it does four wounds total, one of which has a save that can be taken against it. Uh, now, Gilman also has a 3-up invulnerable save, and when he dies the first time, you roll a die, and on a 4-up, he gets back up. 
Now, they didn't say at what stat line he gets back up. I'm assuming it's going to be at his, like, base stat line of, you know, maybe three wounds left. You know, if he comes back up fully powered, that, mm, that seems a little too much for me. But hopefully he comes back up just in his more weakened state, maybe three wounds or something like that. That would make sense to me, but making sense in, like I've said, in a science fiction universe in which we all play this game, it's fictional anyway, so things don't always make sense. Uh, also, another little ability he has is that Ultramarines, Ultramarines only, uh, within six inches of him, reroll hits and wounds. Period. Not range, not melee, not rule, hits and wounds of one, just a reroll hits and wounds. So it seems pretty good. If you have the Primarch of the Ultramarines, if he's going to give um, chapter tactics, they're going to be really good tactics. Uh, we also have a little bit of info about Dreadnoughts. Their stat line, uh, toughness 7, wounds for 4 attacks uh, in melee with their strength 12, AP negative 3, D3 damage weapons. So definitely can be uh, holding their own. Dreadnought could be tearing apart some vehicles pretty easy. Uh, so for example, against uh, our Predator, Predator has uh, 11 wounds. Four attacks, hitting on threes with our Dreadnought, can probably tear apart a Predator in two turns, or two combat phases. So that seems pretty cool. So, what I want to get into now is, again, this is kind of like our last video, where a bunch of things were spoiled. It was Warhammer Fest weekend, so I'm thinking a bunch of stuff was spoiled about regular Marines. Now we have a bunch of stuff spoiled about... Oop, spoiled about... Dramatic. Spoiled about the Chaos Marines. So, what you see here... There... There, there we go. Uh, what you see there is a list of all the units for Chaos and their points cost and their models per unit. I'll be posting where I, the website I got this off of um, in the comment section, or sorry, in the description below. I'll do a better job of that, getting, up, getting that up right away. Um, minimum unit size, maximum unit size, and how much per model it will cost. Now for regular infantry units, or just regular units in general, these do not include war gear, like we saw with the Space Marine Codex as well, or Space Marine Index. Um, but for characters, it does include their war gear, seeing as the characters come with certain things. So while I'll be comparing a couple of bare bones versions of things, uh, the only things we can compare directly are the characters, as we don't know um, the war gear cost for things like how much for my Havocs, for example. They're bare bones, they're 10 points cheaper. If you look down the list here, uh, it's alphabetical order, but I know that picture uh, kind of cuts us off a little bit. Havocs are 13 points for a piece for 5 to 10 models, whereas our regular Havocs, my co handy dandy codex, uh, Chaos Codex sitting right here, just so happens. Uh, my regular Havocs are 75 points for 5, so they're the same cost, right? For bare bones Havocs. Of course, if you want to upgrade to things that Havocs tend to bring, heavy weapons, that will cost you more in the new codex as it does here. Now, while well, you think about, well, what if I bring them bare bones? Does that include that war gear? In the Space Marine Codex, bolt guns, regular bolt guns, bolt pistols, and grenades, uh, and your close combat weapons did not cost you any points. So I'm assuming that's going to carry over to their heretic Astartes cousins as well. Can't call them brothers, we'll call them cousins. So things like um, Chaos Cultists, for example, I'm assuming their pistol and close combat or something like that are going to be free as well. There are five points a model with a min size squad of 10, so that they are the same cost. Uh, Chaos Space Marines, so we scroll down, so our 13 points uh, model for five models, uh, that means they're the same cost as well, 75 points for five previously, bare bones models though. But if we look down at uh, Obliterators, for example, we'll see obliterators here in a second. Uh, they are 65 points, but you must bring three. Previously, they were 70 points for one, and you could bring one to three. But that's kind of all I want to mention. Uh, actually, Chosen, sorry, are a little bit cheaper as well. Chosen now are 16 points per model, uh, bringing five to 10. And previously, Chosen were 90 points for five, so they were previously uh, 18 points a model. Now they're 16 points a model, so a little cheaper, and that's your bare bones. Keep in mind as well, that's bolt gun, bolt pistol, grenades, close combat weapon. Um, of course, Chosen are the things you usually bring some upgrades on, but bare bones, they're cheaper than the previous bare bones. That's what I want to say. But we'll really, really, really see a difference when we get into characters. Now, we'll just get into the characters they have listed here. We won't get into... Um, Things like a Chaos Lord, because Chaos Lord, they're your Swiss Army knife. You can make them, bring them however you want. We'll just get into the named characters. So, first things first, of course, Abaddon the Despoiler. Um, all of these have a special rule as well. Your army can only include one with this name. 
Uh, so Abaddon, the spoiler, was, uh, is now 253 points a model, uh, or for him, because you can only bring one, down from 265 points. We'll see his thing in a second here, actually. You'll get excited. Aramon is way down. Uh, Aramon is 131 points down from his previous 230. And if you're wondering about, well, what if I want to bring him on a disc? Aramon on a disc is 166, down previously um, from 260. So in both cases, almost 100 points cheaper. That's a squad of Havocs. Done. Uh, Cypher. Now, Cypher is the one I don't have that I can't compare to. Cypher is in the Chaos Codex. Ooh. So uh, that'll be interesting to read some fluff about that. But moving on to Fabius Bile. He is down to 109 points, down from 165, so very decent points cost decrease. Uh, Huron Blackheart is down to 125 points, down from 160. Uh, Karn the Betrayer is actually up from 100, uh, from previously from 160 points to now 173 points. Uh, Lucius the Eternal is down to 115 from previously 165. Oh, sorry, down to 115, so down 50 points. Uh, Magnus the Red, which is 415 points, down from 650. I think this is a lot because they really nerfed the Magnus Psychers, Magnus Psychic Armies, so his points cost took a hit for sure because he himself took a pretty good hit. Uh, Typhus, is, and I'd, I've never played a Magnus Psych Army myself, I've just heard the tales and seen a few games played as well, but Typhus himself, my personal favorite to bring, me being a Death Guard player, is 164 points down from 230, so almost a 70 points uh, cost decrease. So across the board, other than a small increase, uh, less than 10% increase for Karn, we get a very large discount on most of our named characters for Chaos. So, yay. So well, going forward, though, let's take a look at some of our other details that were spoiled. Uh, so we have a Psychic Discipline called the Contagion Discipline. Uh, now this will probably come in your starter kit, I'm guessing, because you have the uh, Plague Caster. So this is, I'm guessing you'll get this in there, but it'll of course also be in your Chaos Index that has Chaos Space or that has Chaos Space Marines in it. Uh, so our first power, so D3, they're D3 because you can roll on them, but you can also just choose your powers if you want to as well. Uh, if you're playing just a friendly, fluffy game with your friends based on power levels as opposed to, as opposed to points cost, maybe roll. It's more fun. Right, uh, but if you're in a tournament playing competitive games, maybe they'll uh, allow you to name your powers. Depends on your TO though. So what number one though is Miasma of Pestilence. Uh, it has a warp charge value of six. So remember that's a test on two d six. If manifested, uh, select a visible friendly Death Guard. So keyword Death Guard. We're doing keywords now. Unit within 18 inches of the Psyker. Until the start of your next Psychic phase, your opponent must subtract one from all hit rolls uh, that target that unit. So you could do this before combat phase if they're engaged. You could do this before to get uh, them a better, essentially cover save. Right? If they're in cover, so they're going to be harder to hit that, or so they have a better save because of that, you could also make them harder to hit. Uh, so Gift of Contagion is number two. Gift of Contagion has a warp charge value of seven on 2d6. If manifested, select a visible enemy unit within 18 inches of Psyker and roll a d3. Consult the table below to discover what characteristic penalty all models in the unit suffer until the start of your next psychic phase. This cannot reduce characteristic to less than one. So it goes through the rest of your turn and your opponent's turn as well, because it happens until your next psychic phase. So on a one, they are have fly blown palsy, minus one attack. Uh, so remember, you can't go less than one, so if a unit already charged in and you want, oh, they're not gonna be able to attack, no, they still have base one attack minimum always. Muscular atrophy, uh, minus one strength, so against play, if they're fighting against Plague Marines with Toughness 5, minus one strength makes them wound on, you know, fives. So, seems good. And liquefi liquefying ague, uh, minus one toughness. So, if you're having a hard time wounding them, do that. Uh, of course, it's a random, you don't get to choose that, but that's the one you would want anyway. And number three, Plague Wind. Plague Wind has a warp charge value of five. If manifested, select a visible enemy within uh, visible enemy unit within 18 inches of the Psyker. Roll one dice for each model in that unit. The unit suffers a mortal wound for each roll of a six. Not as good as it used to be, sadly, but uh, I feel like Psychic Powers in general have taken a bit of a hit. So Plague Wind used to be better, but it's it's a whole new addition, so we can't expect things to be the same. But every, every time something you have gets a little bit worse, you're like, mm. But of course, everything got a lot cheaper, so what are we expecting, right? 
uh, Renegades Knight, Renegade Knights. Uh, sorry, I know there's a lot of info on this page. If you guys can't read it, like I said, there will be uh, posting a link in the description below, so you can always check that out as well. So our Renegade Knight has star, star, star for movement, weapon skill, and ballistic skill based on how many wounds he has left. So uh, if his remaining wounds, he starts at 24. If his remaining wounds are 13 to 24, he can move 12 uh, and hits on threes, both weapon and ballistic skill. If his remaining wounds are 7 to 12, uh, I know it's cut off up there. I know it's cut off. Uh, I can't see the rest either, but that's pretty much how everything has been anyway, so I'm saying that his ballistic skill hits on threes as well. So remaining wounds 7 to 12, he can move 9 inches and hit on fours. Remaining wounds 1 to 6, he can move 6 inches and hit on fives. Um, strength 8, toughness 8, 24 wounds, like I said, 4 attacks close combat, leadership 9, and a 3 up save. So Renegade Knight is a single model, equipped with a Reaper Chainsword, a Thunderstrike Gauntlet, and heavy, stubber, and titanic feet. Now these, as you're, if you're wondering why the picks, uh, quality of these picks is not great, I'm guessing at some point this weekend somebody found a Chaos book, snuck a few pictures, and this is what we got. So, uh, the Avenger Gatling Cannon has a range of 36 inches, heavy 12, strength 6, and, uh, ar negative 2 armor modifier, and does 2 damage. Uh, heavy Flamer, it has 8 inch range, it's heavy D6, hits D6 times, of course, uh, automatically hits D6 times, strength 5 and negative 1 armor modifier, does 1 damage. Now for a Flamer being on a Knight, that seems like that should do more, but... Uh, heavy Stubber, 36 inch, heavy 3, strength 4, uh, with no armor modifier and 1 damage. A something Storm uh, Missile Pod. 72 inch uh, range, heavy d6, strength 5, armor modifier negative 1, and 2 damage. This weapon can target units that are not visible to the bearer. I've never owned any knights, so I don't know the names of all these offhand, so forgive me. Uh, if you know them, you can put them in the comment section below because we can't quite make them out. Uh, melt a gun, 12 inch regular old melta, 12 inch assault 1, strength 8, armor modifier negative 4, and d6 damage. If you're within half range, roll 2 dice when inflicting damage and discard the lowest result. Rapid Fire Battle Cannon, real good, uh, 72 inch range, heavy 2d6, heavy shots, uh, strength 8, armor modifier negative 2, and d3 damage per unsaved wound. Uh, something Spear Rocket Pod, 48 inch, heavy 3, uh, strength 8, armor modifier negative 2, and d6 damage. So you're kind of anti-vehicle rockets. Uh, something Cannon? Thermal Cannon, 36-inch, uh, like I said, guys, these are not the best picks, I'm so, uh, but uh, you can check them out. Thermal Cannon, 36-inch range, heavy D3, strength 9, AP negative 4, uh, D6 damage. When attacking units with 5 or more models, change this weapon's type to heavy D6 instead. If the target is within half range, roll 2 dice when inflicting damage, and discard the lowest result. So, Super Melta, basically. Uh, something large... Something Icarus Auto Twin Icarus Auto Cannon is what I appreciate sure it says. 48 inch, heavy two, strength seven, negative one armor modifier and two damage. Add one to hit add one to hit rolls made for this weapon against targets that can fly. Subtract one from hit rolls made against other targets. So you kinda have your dedicated anti air weapon. Um, so at default, you know, you're hitting on threes, but you're fine against two uh, shooting against flyers, you're hitting on twos, shooting against ground units, you're hitting on fours. So uh, Reaper Chain Sword, melee, type melee, uh, strength plus 4, so strength 12, uh, AP modifier negative 3, and just flat out 6 damage. It seems to be what D weapons are, is just 6 damage. Uh, and Thunder Strike Gauntlet is melee, strength times 2, so strength 16. Strength 16. Yep. Uh, negative 4 armor modifier and 6 damage. Subtract 1 from hit rolls for attacks made with this weapon. If you slay a vehicle or monster with Thunderstrike Gauntlet, select an enemy unit within 9 inches and roll a d6. On a 4+, plus, that model suffers d3 mortal wounds as the dead body or debris is thrown at it. I love that. I just, I love that. That's so cool. I think I can kill this, and then I'm going to throw it at you. Mm, it's just picking up squish throw. That's basically what's happening. Um, I, I, enjoy, I might have to buy a knight so I can do that. Uh, Titanic Fist, I think is what that says. Uh, melee strength user, so strength 8. Armor modifier negative 2 and d3 damage. Make 3 hit rolls for each attack made with this weapon instead of 1. Huh? 
Make three hit rolls for each attack made with this weapon instead of one. Oh, okay. So you get you triple your attacks, essentially, but it's, it's only strength eight. It doesn't do as much damage. Okay, I think that's what that means. If So what I'm taking that to mean is make three hit rolls for each attack made with this weapon instead of one. So if I, you, know, you can split your melee attacks. So if I pick my two of my attacks, or attacks characteristic is four. So I can take two attacks, double them into six, and hit, like, a little infantry unit that's in front of me with a bunch of bleh, mean stuff and just... If somebody's trying to bog me down with a horde unit, I can hit them with that instead if I want. That's what I'm taking that to mean. If you understand that differently than me, please let me know. But that's what I'm taking that to mean. Uh, award your options. This model may... So remember by default, you are have your Reaper Chainsword and Thunderstrike Gauntlet, a Heavy Stubber, and Titanic Feet. Oh, that's what that is. Titanic Feet on the bottom. Hmm. Um, so this model may take one item from the Carapace weapons list, which will be somewhere in the book, I imagine. This model will replace Thunderfire Gauntlet with one of... The uh, with one item from Knight Weapons. I guess these will all our options here will be characterized. This model may replace its Reaper Chainsword with one item from the Knight Weapons list. This model will replace its Heavy Stubber with a Melta Gun, which I probably usually would. Um, Ion Shield. This model has a five up and vulnerable save against shooting attacks. You're no more declaring one side for your three up. You just get five up all around. If this model is reduced to zero wounds, roll a d6 before removing it from the battlefield. Uh, it's on a 6, usually is what the rule is, it explodes, and each unit within 2d6 suffers d6 mortal wounds. So each unit within, to roll, 8 inches, suffers d6 mortal wounds. And d6 mortal wounds are the wounds that roll over. So if one model dies, the rest will die as well. Knight Titan. A regular uh, Renegade Knight can fall back in the movement phase and still shoot and something uh, this turn, so charge maybe. When a Renegade Knight falls back, you can even move over infantry models. It must end its move. It must be more than one inch from, uh, from all enemy units. In addition, Renegade Knight can something weapons without suffering the penalty uh, to its hit roll. So it can fire heavy weapons, I'm guessing, probably. So that's kind of our old super heavy rule, right? You can fire and split fire and no hit penalty. So it's kind of getting that as well. Finally, Renegade Knight only gains a something uh, cover if at least half of the model is obscured from, uh, from the firer. There you go, guys. If you didn't like playing people who kind of towed into cover with a Night Titan, not see, he's has a half inch of his base on that uh, tree, so I got a cover save now. No more of that. The model has to be covered, 50% of the model has to be covered. Whether that's half vertically, diagonally, horizontally, however you want to do it, half of the model has to be covered for it to get any kind of cover save. I'm glad they addressed that. So, yeah, I might have to buy a Knight. Stats for Abaddon. Uh, movement 6 inch, weapon skill hitting on 2s, ballistic skill hitting on 2s, strength 4, toughness 5. Uh, I have my Abaddon page right open here, so we'll take a look. Now I know it's a little bit apples and oranges because we're in a completely different edition, but uh, we will still have a look. So strength is the same as before, ballistic skill uh, is the same as before, essentially is ballistic skill 5 before. Uh, weapon skill, of course, is better now that we don't have to hit on 3s all the time. We can hit on 2s because he was weapon skill 7 before. That usually meant you were hitting on threes, because that's as good as it got if you weren't Karn. Uh, toughness five is the same. Wounds, of course, is going to be different. So you have seven wounds now. Six attacks, base, uh, where you had four base before, uh, but plus two weapons. So that. Leadership ten is the same as two up save, and Terminator armor is the same. Uh, so single model armed with Drachnian and the Talon of Horus only. One of this model may be included in your army, because it's Abaddon. There are no, there's only one. Well... There's been two sometimes, but there's usually only one. So he has what appears to be kind of a storm bolter, or heavy bolter. 24-inch range, rapid fire 2, strength 4, negative 1 armor modifier, and D3 damage. Uh, then Drachnium, which has its good old demon special rule. Uh, plus 1 strength on his attack, so strength 5, AP modifier of negative 3, and D3 uh, wounds per unsaved, or D3 damage per unsaved wound. So roll a d6 each time Abaddon the Spoiler fights uh, on a roll of 1, he suffers a mortal wound and cannot use this weapon further during this phase. On a 2+, plus, he can make that many additional attacks with this weapon. So on a 1, so again you can split your attacks number. So I can say, okay, I'm going to do 3 attacks with Drachnian, 3 attacks with the Talons, and um, if you roll your attacks with Drachnian, you roll a 1. Okay, those 3 attacks are just gone, and you can continue to use the Talons. So the Talons are strength times 2, AP negative 3 and D3 damage a piece. So, if you're, again, Horde Army, uh, you want to use Drachnian so you get more attacks out. 
something big, powerful, you want to use the Talon, is from my view. But uh, Death of the False Emperor, we still don't have the details on that. That's going to be interesting to see. Dark Destiny, Abaddon the Despoiler has a 4 plus invul invuln save. In addition, all damage suffered by Abaddon's the Despoiler is halved, rounding. That's a very important word to miss out, whoever took this picture. Mm. Uh, I'm going to be optimistic and say rounding down. Yeah, okay. Lord of the Black Legion, you may reroll any failed hit rolls for friendly Black Legion units that are within mm, I can use 6, 6 or 12 of Abaddon on the spoiler, Mark of Chaos Ascendant, um, any friend, or sorry, friendly Heretic Astarte units automatically pass morale test whilst they are within 12 inches of Abaddon the Despoiler. So because this rule says 12 inch, the Lord of the Black Re Legion rule might be 12 inch as well, but that's something we're just going to have to wait and see. And Teleport Strike, so te uh, Abaddon can teleport, that kind of kinda seems to be a blanket rule. Abaddon can teleport in, anywhere up the battlefield is more than 9 inches away from any unit. And I did make, uh, when I was talking about the Interceptors, the Jump Marines, uh, the Jump Primaris Marines, I did make a mistake saying that they would need an 8 inch charge. But somebody corrected me, thank you, uh, saying that it has to be more than 9 inches away, so you have to have 9.1 inches minus having to be within 1 inch, so you still have 8.1 inches. I know you don't do 8.1, I know it's like 8 and a 16th. Um, but you have to be 8 and a 16th away, so it would still have to be a 9 inch charge. So thank you for correcting me on that. But yeah, Abaddon seems pretty good, and at a reduced points cost, I have my old metal Abaddon, right? Why not bring him? See, at least try it out, at least have some fun, play with the models you have, people. Mm. Mm. I'm excited about this, if you couldn't tell, guys. Obliterators. I know, everybody. Oh, obliterators. Oh, wait for it. So, Obliterators. I can have movement four, but their weapon is an assault weapon, so always advance them. Because if you advance something, they can still shoot their assault weapons. Uh, I think they just take a, have a hit modifier, but... Uh, weapon skill hitting on threes, bliss skill hitting on threes, strength five, toughness four only. I would really like to see these guys because these seems like seem like um, chaos centurions, basically, right? So I would have liked to see these guys have toughness five. But uh, three wounds, three attacks, leadership eight, and a two up save. So not a lot has changed there. Uh, the weapons now are just flesh metal guns. Boop. Twenty four inch range, assault two, uh, strength six plus d three. AP minus D3, and damage D3. Because we don't know, it's no more, they just like, grow meltas, grow assault cannons. Um, so flesh metal weapons. When a unit of obliterators is chosen to shoot in the shooting phase, or in overwatch, roll 3D3, one at a time. The first roll is added to D6, sorry, uh, is added to 6 to determine the strength of the unit's shooting attacks. The second roll is the AP, and the third is the damage. For example, if the rolls were 1, uh, followed by a 3, followed by a 2, then the unit's attacks would have a strength 7, an AP of negative 3, and a damage of 2 for that shooting phase or overwatch attack. Uh, they also have a 5 off invuln saves and can teleport in. So keep in mind, um, if you played Necrons before, this isn't as bad as the Catan powers where you had to pick your target and then shoot, and then pick your power. You get to say, okay, my obliterators are going to shoot. They have bleep, strength 8, AP minus 2, and 3 damage. Okay, so this is a good weapon for shooting against a large group of infantry. Where is a large group of infantry? Right there, they're going to shoot at them. Because if you've seen our last video, you pick the unit you're going to shoot with first, and the flesh metal, flesh metal weapon says when a unit of, of blood raiders is chosen to shoot in the shooting phase. It doesn't say, say when you've picked your target, it says when they are chosen to shoot. That is the first thing you do in your shooting phase. So I choose to shoot with my blood raiders, get their weapon, and then choose what to shoot at. So because of that, they are better. Um, are we going to see them a lot? Still probably not. Um, when the, what is it, Traitor's Hate came out, we did see them have their formation, was it Traitor's Hate or Legion, I, whatever video just came out, or book for them just came out that gave them their formation. Um, I can see bringing a couple units of these, just kind of deep strike in behind something and shoot it a lot with hopefully high strength, good weapons. But that's the thing, if you roll bad, you're shooting strength 7, AP minus 1, strength 1. Or 1 damage. We'll see. Um, as well, if they fall back, they can't shoot, so if somebody does manage to tie them up, they're rolling strength 5. Eh, so, yeah. Just, I don't see them seeing a lot more play, but I think they're better than what people were giving them credit for before. Um, Havocs, moving on to. 
Havix uh, have to come with their own aspiring champion. Everybody has uh, movement of six, weapon skill hitting on threes, bliss skill hitting on threes, strength four, toughness four, one wound. The champion has two attacks, regular Havix have one, champion has leadership eight, regular Havix have seven, and they all have a three up save. This unit contains one aspiring champion and four Havocs. It can include up to five additional Havocs. Sorry guys, that's my air conditioning. It can up to five additional Havocs. Uh, each model is armed with a bolt gun, bolt pistol, frag grenades, and crack grenades. So those weapons don't cost any points to bring, like I was saying. We've been over all those weapons before, so I'm not going to go anything there. Uh, any model replaces bolt gun with a chain sword. So you can have a chain sword and pistol. Remember, a chain sword grants you one uh, additional attack. Up to four Havocs may replace their Bolt Gun with one item from the Heavy Weapons or Special Weapons lists. Inspiring Champion may replace his Pistol and Bolt Gun with items from the Champion Equipment list. One model may take a Chaos Icon. They have Death of the False Emperor, Chaos, Arkham Chaos, Heretic Stardis, and Legion, and Infantry and Havocs rule type. So, um, again, because we don't know the cost of what their weapons are going to be, we can't evaluate these as a whole yet. But being that their base a little bit cheaper, never hurt nobody. Heldrake. Mm. Heldrake. Uh, so, has movement, weapon skill, and attacks uh, that are modifiable depending on wounds left. So, if it has 7 to 12 wounds left, starts at 12. It uh, can move 30 inches and a weapon skill, and I'm guessing ballistic skill, hitting on 3 plus. Uh, 4 to 6 wounds left is a 20 inch movement for hits on hitting on 4s. 1 to 3 wounds left is a 10 inch movement, hitting on 5s. Uh, so, it's Bale Flamer. So, uh, Heldrake is a single model equipped with a Hades Auto Cannon and Heldrake Claws. So it doesn't come stock with its Bale Flamer, it comes stock with the Auto Cannon. Uh, Bale Flamer's 18-inch Assault D6, Strength 6, AP modifier negative 2, and 2 damage apiece. This weapon automatically hits its targets like most of our Flamers do now. 18-inch, so that's essentially giving it its old uh, Torrent rule, right? Uh, Hades Auto Cannon is 36-inch, Heavy 4, Strength 8, AP modifier negative 1, and 2 damage apiece. So, the Heldrake Claws uh, are melee, Strength User, AP modifier negative one and D3 damage a piece on its. Oh, sorry, we don't have its attack stat either. Hmm. Mm -hmm. That'll be interesting to see. That's actually a kind of a big omission. Uh, but hey, I'm not gonna blame the person who gave us these pictures. Crash and burn. If this model is reduced to zero wounds, roll a D6 before removing uh, the model from the battlefield. On a six, it crashes in a fire explosion, and each unit within six inches suffers D3 mortal wounds. I just realized if we have no more templates, are we still gonna have scattered eyes? Probably not. I'm a little... Is it bad that I'm more upset to see Scattered Eyes go than Templates? Mm. Anyway. Um, but without seeing the melee attacks, and without knowing for sure um, whether or not we can... Um, like, can this, like, rake guys on the ground as it's flying by? Right? Can it engage units on the ground? Kind of sit there and flap it like a... Can it be a really evil big butterfly? Uh, um, we'll see, but... Yeah, I don't, I don't know how I feel about that necessarily. So the Heldrake Claws as well, sorry. Uh, when attacking models that can fly, you may add one to this weapons to hit roll. Uh, so it'll be hitting on th uh, twos, threes, or fours then. But, you know, our Inceptor Marines, the Jump Pack Marines, they have, they will have fly. They have fly special rules, so how can they engage with this and vice versa? In you know, interesting little things to see that... Hopefully there's an answer to once we get the full book, or there'll be an FAQ, maybe. Uh, finally, we have our Land Raider stats as well, so I'm assuming most of these you'll be able to carry over to the Loyalist Space Marines as well. So our Chaos Land Raider has variable wounds, movement, ballistic skill, uh, and attacks. We don't know its attacks yet, because that is cut off. But So its remaining wounds, it starts at 16. Uh, from 9 to 16 wounds, it can move 10 inches, and it has ballistic skill hitting on 3s. 5 to 8 wounds left, it has movement of 5 inches and hits on 4s. 1 to 4 wounds remaining, it moves 3 inches and hits on 5s. It also has a weapon skill of hitting on 6s. It has strength 8, toughness 8, 16 wounds like I said, leadership 9, and has a 2-up save. A Chaos Land Raider is a single model equipped with a twin heavy bolter, two twin LAS cannons, and smoke launchers. Uh, so we have our Havoc Launcher, 48-inch uh, heavy D6, strength 5, and 1 damage apiece. We have our Twin Heavy Bolters, it's 36 inch, heavy 6, uh, strength 5, AP negative 1, damage 1. A Twin Laz Cannon, Laz Cannons we know about, but 48 inch, heavy 2, strength 9, because um, remember it used to be a Twin Link Laz Cannon, but now it's just Twin Laz Cannon with two shots. 
Strength 9, AP modifier of negative 3, and D6 damage each. And of warrior options, this unit may take a Havoc Launcher and or one item from the combi weapons list. So those are things I'm guessing you'll have to pay for, uh, we just don't know the cost of them yet. So it has its smoke launchers, once per game instead of shooting any weapon in the shooting phase, a Chaos Land Raider uh, can use its smoke launchers in until your next shooting phase, your opponents must subtract one from all hit rolls uh, for ranged weapons that target this vehicle. So instead of using any weapon, any weapons, so instead of shooting any weapons, you have to basically forego your shooting phase, just like the old smoke launchers. Or no, the old smoke launchers work differently. You have to forego your shooting phase with your land raider to pop smoke. As Demotic Machine Spirit, ignore the minus one hit modifier for moving and shooting heavy weapons with this model. So. Don't worry about it's all its weapons being heavy, you're still hitting, hitting on uh, threes, fours, and fives, depending on your wounds left. Explodes. If this model is reduced to zero wounds, roll a d6 for removing the model uh, from the battlefield and before any embarked models disembark. On a six, it explodes at each unit within six inches, suffers d6 mortal wounds. It has a transport, so it can carry up to ten Legion infantry models. Each Terminator and Jump Pack model takes up the space of two models, uh, and each Cult of Destruction model takes up the space of three other models. So we have yet, I don't know, have we seen any Cult of Destruction stuff? I haven't seen any, but we'll see. So Chaos, uh, Mark of Chaos, Heretic Stardies, Legion uh, are the faction keywords, and it has Vehicle, Transport, and Chaos Land Raider for its other keywords. So our last little bit for today, I was talking about just general Dark Hereticus Discipline. Before the battle, generate the psychic powers for psychers. They can use powers from the Dark Hereticus Discipline using the table below. You can either roll a d3 to generate their powers randomly, reroll any duplicate results, or you can select the psychic powers you wish the psyker to have. So like I said, depending on the game you're playing against, if you're just playing for fun, roll. See what happens. Have a good time. If you're getting ready for a tournament or if you're at a tournament, you're probably going to pick your powers. So on a 1, you get Infernal Gaze. Infernal Gaze has a warp charge value of 5 on a 2d6. If manifested, select a visible enemy within 18 inches of the Psyker and roll 3 dice. The target suffers 1 mortal wound for each roll of a 4+. plus. Well, so that's not bad. You get 1 or 2 mortal wounds off of it. Yeah, man. That's, to me, that's like to take down something like a vehicle or a character or something like that. Uh, warp time. Warp time. It's warp time. Uh, I'm going to say that every time I cast that. Every time. It's warp time. What time is it? It's warp time. Sorry. Sorry. Anyway. Uh, warp time has a charge value of 6. If manifested, pick a friendly heretic Astartes unit within 3 inches of the Psyker. That unit can immediately move as if it were the movement phase. You cannot use warp time on a unit more than once in each Psychic phase. So you have 4 Psykers surrounding 1 unit. You can't kind of shunt them up the board. That You can only use it once. And yeah. Although that would be cool. Kind of boop, 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 boop. Oh, they're over here now. Sorry. Uh, Prescience has a warp charge value of 7 on 2d6. Uh, if manifested, select a heretic Astartes unit within 18 inches of the Psyker. You can add 1 to all hit rolls made for that unit until the start of your next Psychic phase. So Prescience kind of does the same thing it did before. But that is everything I have for you guys for today. Uh, all these like leaks and spoilers. I really hope like GW doesn't punish anybody for these, because I don't know about you guys, but it's just getting me more excited for this. Like, yes, Chaos is one of my armies, so I'm excited to see their rules. But even the, the Space Marine stuff yesterday, I do have some Space Marine stuff. So I'm excited to see that. I'm excited to see Orcs. I have no Orcs. I'll be excited to see Eldar, because I have no Eldar. But just the new rules. It's new, and it's exciting, and it's shiny. Um, maybe I'm just the Eternal Optimist, though. What do you guys think about all this stuff? Anything you like that you really see, or broken stuff that you can see you want to do, or really underpowered stuff? Like, are, are you going to use Obliterators? Are you? Are you? Uh, but uh, let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. Uh, now, you guys may have noticed recently, uh, my channel has become monetized, but I want to say something for you guys. Between, it became monetized on Saturday. Every penny I make off that monetization between Saturday and the release day will be going towards more prizes for uh, the giveaway. Whether I can get an index, whether I can get a couple indexes, where I can get another core rulebook, if I can get a whole starter kit, that's up to you guys, right? The more views that happen, the more the more money that goes towards more prizes for this draw. So the more people can enjoy because because it's uh, thanking you. It's because of you guys I'm doing this. Uh, if you guys weren't watching, I wouldn't be doing this. So I want to say thank you and give back to you guys. So the more views, 
the more money towards prizes, the more pro chances you have of winning. Uh, keeping that in mind, if you, you haven't uh, commented on a video or subscribed yet, make sure both of those are done. If you have commented on this or any other Warhammer 40k video on this channel uh, and are a subscriber, then you are entered in for our draw on June 17th on release day for a minimum, minimum, of the five, one of each of the five indexes and the core rulebook itself. Those will be given to six different people. Like I said, whatever I can get with the monetization money will be added on top of that as well. I'll let you guys know how that's going. But uh, that's our contest. That happens on June 17th. Also on June 17th, release day, if you live in the Medicine Hat or area, come on down to Comic Readers on Railway Avenue on June 17th. Uh, we will be having a Warhammer 8th edition. Yay, it's out now and playing a bunch of games day. Um, I'd love to see you guys there. Bring your own models if you have. If you don't, I'll be bringing all of mine so we can play with everything. It'll be a good old time celebrating the release of 8th edition. That's everything I have for you guys today. Um, again, if you liked, like, share, subscribe, comment, um, everything that lets people know that I'm doing this. I uh, would love to hear back from you guys. Don't forget, if you had a hard time reading any of these, it'll be down in the description below, the link to where I got all of this. Um, I'd love to hear back from you guys as well. Thank you so much for your support, and going forward, I hope to see you guys back as well. Uh, hope you have an awesome rest of your day. I know I will. And remember, the Emperor protects.